Hello guys, what's up? This is the Michael Lum here, 1997, and today, in case you guys not know, is the review of the Evil Within. Holy crap! I've been playing this game for ever since I got it on Tuesday. This is the PS4 edition review, and I must just say, before I go deep into this review, I must just say that survival horror is a franchise that's been kind of been destroyed lately. The game's not being as scary, but more based on action. And, you know, now, we have a developer, actually two games, um, I haven't played the second one, Alien Isolation, but, this developer, Tango Gameworks, wants to bring back some survival horror. And who's at the helm of this? Is director Shinji Mikami. If you guys don't know who this is, this is the daddy of survival horror. Started the Resident Evil series, who directed the original, and even directed Resident Evil 4, the legendary masterpiece which everyone considers. Um, and basically, he says that survival horror has been kind of been is being butchered. やっぱり僕自身がどうしてホラーに戻ってきたかというと、その簡単に言うとサバイバルホラーっていうもの自体のジャンルがかなりその実際にはアクションゲーム、ミヤイコールアクションゲームになってて、本当のサバイバルホラーっていうのがやっぱりあまり世に出なくなってきたっていうそこが一番。Uh, by developers these days, and he really wants um, to bring survival horror back in a specific way possible. And I believe that the hype really paid off, in my opinion. Um, also, this would be, I'm also going to be adding a little bit of uh, variables in this. I also asked people on Facebook and Twitter to ask questions for the review. So hopefully, um, they ask questions, and I will be answering them throughout this video. So, um, my personal opinion. It does live up to the hype and it's definitely worth it. So I'm gonna look up a few questions right now before I go deeply into the video itself. Um, let's see. Ooh, well, let's just get into this because I'm really getting into it. So, um, Sam Singe on Facebook, he asked me, is the game worth the $60 price tag or should I buy it on sale? Now, for me, for me personally, it's worth the $60 price tag because I really got a lot of uh, game length out of it, um, fun out of it. And basically, a lot of scares out of it. So that's what I really got out of this experience. So let's just get into this game's story. As a story in some horror games really does help the game really show its dark uh, turns. So I have actually some notes here, which I wrote down, and I'm going to be talking. And I'm going to be basically reading off the notes and adding some little bit things into it. So let's get into the story. The story you play as Detective Sebastian Castellanos, if that's how you say his name, who is basically a detective who worked for two other characters named Joseph Oda and Julie Kidman. Basically, these uh, detectives had to go check out an investigation of what appears to be a multiple homicide at the Beacon Mental Hospital. Sorry, detectives. I know you're just coming off a case, but I'm afraid we're gonna have to make a detour. Sounds serious. Is it a riot? A call went out just before I picked you up. Said it was multiple homicides. Half a dozen units already on scene. One, three, one. Please advise. And he beats the ghost of that doctor who went schizo and chopped up all those patients. That's not what happened. Some patients disappeared. Some kind of scandal. But when um, Sebastian Castellanos and his group gets there, they realize that this massive homicide is just a small plan for what's coming ahead. Ah. <laughs> smells like blood. All right. Stay sharp. We're gonna check it out. Don't let anyone else through this door. I can be an extra set of eyes. We don't know what's happening here. You're a backup. Did you hear something? Someone alive in here. Are you injured? What happened here? Can't be real. Impossible. Ruvik. I've got him. The security cameras might tell us something. Uh, 
after that, Sebastian gets knocked out and unconscious, and then wakes up to find out that everything is changed. The world darker and there's evil monster that wants Sebastian dead and basically the story is about just trying to survive find out what's going on what's causing this evil, evil force to happen and basically stopping it now the story itself has a lot of ambitions and it has a lot of cool mystery behind it especially throughout the first few levels when you don't know what the hell is going on um, the city is shifting and things are going moving all over the place it's an amazing idea but throughout the story, the, the game gets a little bit too ambitious for its own idea, and it starts going out of control. Now, what I mean by out of control is the story doesn't uh, flip itself over and go out of control like stupid, but it did go out intensely insane to the point where if you're not paying attention to every single detail, you're not going to know what the hell is going on at times. Basically, I was paying attention the whole time, even though I started jumping from my bed over and over again, screaming at times, and holy crap. It really does raise tension, so that's really a good thing. And the storytelling actually is intriguing in some parts, and some characters are actually enjoyable. Most notably, the villain of the game, whose name is Ruvik. He's a really creepy character when you first read him, as he has some type of supernatural powers. Who do you think you are? I know who you are. Seb. I know what you crave, what you fear. Will you be able to live with yourself knowing what I'm gonna make you do? Poor little Joseph couldn't. Too bad they dragged you into this. But either way, you're mine. To do with as I please. First, but then we start learning more about who is Ruvik and all that stuff. And then we have also your other side characters like Julie Kidman and basically um, Joseph Oda. Now, those characters as well are also interesting, also have some cool, um, not side stories or backstories, but they kind of have a personality that lacks the main protagonist, who is Sebastian Cassianos. Now, he's kind of the gruff character who basically is kind of not boring, but he doesn't, have, he doesn't really do much in the game. Yes, you play as him, you're killing all these monsters and trying to survive, but while the other characters have some context and basically have a personality, Sebastian doesn't really have that much personality. Unless you count the collectibles of his uh, journals where he writes in them all the time, you learn more backstory about him that way. But I wish actually he actually, he actually had a personality in some ways. It's kind of disappointing, but hopefully, if they do a sequel and if the game does well enough to make a sequel happen, I hope they actually do, um, make more of a protagonist that actually has more heart, more affection to him. But overall, the storytelling is amazing. And the ending, which some people are mixed about, I actually thought it was a great ending. It, it was a little ambiguous at times, but it was still a great ending overall. And I really do love that. So, that's what really So, let's go answer another question. Let me go on Facebook this time and check again. What kind of scary is it, though? My first ever experience with the horror genre was with PT on PS4, and I loved it. This is from Tim Tom Morris on Facebook. It wasn't survival horror, you just explored and creepy things would happen, and the odd jump scares here and there. I want to play something like that, but The Evil Within looks more a survival horror kind of game, so I don't think I would enjoy it as much. Well, Tom, this game is not exploration. You can do some exploration in certain elements, as you can look around for certain materials you need. But it's not like open world like uh, exploration, like you can't just look in this door and look at it like closely. I mean, PT on its own is a great scary demo, and I played it personally, and I was scared as hell with it. But this is a true survival horror game. This is like Resident Evil 4. If you haven't played Resident Evil 4, this is basically the new Resident Evil 4 with a fresh coat of paint on it. And that's really cool for me. So, Tom, it's not the scary type of game you had with PT. But it definitely is a survival horror game or a scary game that's really worth it. Mixing psychological horror with that good old gore once in a while and jump scares. 
it actually reminds me of like films at times that I was personally scared of, but it, it takes those tropes and twists around. So let's go into gameplay. Now I'm gonna personally go into gameplay as I've recently wrote like a page and a half of what I thought the gameplay was. Now, if you guys ever played Resident Evil 4, this is basically Resident Evil 4, but you can also move and shoot instead of this one. So and the game is actually scary. Like I said, the game actually had my pulse, like my heart rating at times, and certain sequences were just basically make a real time events and you basically had to run away from these like big creatures. Actually the first enemy you face in the game, in my opinion, is kind of an homage to Resident Evil 4, which is the guy with the chainsaw. He level, you can't really fight him. You just get to run away from him because you're defenseless and you're injured. And it's an amazing setup to what the game has to show you later on. And that's a great way to really set up the horror faction. As you, you're really gunless, you have no weapons, and you just have to run and you're injured, like I said. It's really intensifying. Um, also, like I said, the atmosphere is just downright great. It's pitch perfect. It's dark. It's disturbing. And it, it, it feels like, like every time you look around, you feel like something's just gonna rise back from the dead and just give you a chomp or stab you. You feel like something's gonna kill you every single second. And that, in my opinion, is amazing. And I love that as a survival horror game, you have to be scared of the game. You always have to be so that you can't always feel like you can overcome any situation by having like multiple machine guns and all that. No, the game starts you off with a pistol, that's a magnum pistol. And then you'll get different guns, like a shotgun, then you'll get a crossbow, and then you get multiple weapons. But, if you think you get like 20 bullets in every single uh, loot you pick up, no you're not. You might just get a bullet or two, just barely. Like certain moments when I have to fight multiple enemies, I would see a box. I'll break the box, and you'll all get a single sniper rifle bullet. You'll get sniper rifles, you get shotguns, crossbows. And, um, that's basically a uh, few of the weapons you get. If you pre-order the game, you can also get a double barrel shotgun. Which I basically pre-ordered because I basically, um, really want to survive. Um, so, and I really do love survival for it. And now, it's really just getting to me. Um, let's see what else we can also say about this game. Like I said, um, and if you think this game is going to be a cakewalk, no, it's not. In my playthrough, personally, in a normal playthrough, I died a total of 69 times, which is surprising. And if you think you're gonna survive, no, you're gonna die a lot. <laughs> played on the normal difficulty and I died 69 times. And for, so I'm just surprised me because I don't really die that much in survival horror games. As I learned that from now on, like in like certain games like Dead Space or other games, it's easy for you to survive because you always have like a med pack all the time. This game, it, it, it they take everything away. It's scarce. Ammo is scarce, med pack is scarce, everything is scarce. It's amazing how this is really how survival horror really is meant to be 
And the game is a kind of spoiled how survival horror is originally supposed to be. And at times I would get angry. But I would get angry for the wrong reason. I was being angry at those other games. But I still think that everything that they've done here is amazing as well. It even takes ideas from the original Resident Evil games. For example, if you kill an, uh, an enemy called the Haunted, these enemies are called the Haunted, you could you also need matches to burn their bodies. Because if you don't burn their bodies and you go right around them, they will rise back from the dead and they'll be faster. And they can also be uh, easier to kill because you just shoot them in the head their head blows up. It's an amazing idea. You can also stomp by the heads if you run out of matches. But you can always... Um, Always leave the percentage chance of a risk that they will come back and they will just stab you in the neck. And like I said, the game is challenging. Mostly, most of my deaths were basically just by common, like, monsters, which just, like, slash you in the neck and then stomp on your head, which is just brutally and challenging at times. The game is no easy walk, like I said. It's hard throughout 15 chapters, and it's amazing how challenging this game can be. It's really brutal at times, as at times, like, even the boss battles themselves are just downright amazing. Leslie! 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 It's not in how the like the design of the bosses, but the design of how they look. Like for example, um, if you guys have not known by the pictures, you will also be fighting one of my opinion, one of the most anticipated bosses ever, which is also on this picture, the box man or the keeper. The guy with the safe on his head and barbary wrapped around it with a hammer. He also carries the harvested brains of all his victims. And his boss is amazing. Actually, some of the boss battles are actually good, but the Keeper really does steal the show, in my opinion. As his boss battle, in my opinion, was the most intensifying and most horrifying boss yet. Not only because he's just scary. He's scary, but he's also dangerous. And he also had tons of variables on you. Like, in the first time you encounter the box, man, you're going to be fighting him while there's poison gas in the room, while he's charging it with his big hammer, and not only that, he'll also leave booby traps for you to step on so you can damage yourself and also get killed by his attack. And he's like a one hit, like at times for me, personally, he was a one hit kill or a two hit kill at times. It was brutal. He will massacre you up. If you play the higher difficulties, they're definitely gonna be screaming in anger and throwing your controller across the screen in the room. My bad. And anger, but you also learn it's just as much as a reward for beating him down and killing him. And that's just how good it is. Ooh, let's get into um, even more stuff. Uh, controls are even g great. No longer do we have to stick with those clunky controls on how if you want to aim on this guy and it's clunky at times. No, it's a lot more um, uh, fixed, it's not more tweaked for the next uh, generation of gaming. And it's more tweaked for our how we want to play games. In the past, it was acceptable because we were in the past and we weren't really know how to really work with these controls that well. But now, those controls in the past feel like tank controls, like they take forever just to work with. But now we have precise controls and the controls here are amazing. They start off clunky as first as some of the, sometimes your pistol would sway around a lot and the recoil and accuracy won't be precisely perfect. But you have to get used to it. The game is all about getting used to things and getting used to everything. That's amazing, in my opinion. Weapons, like I said, are fun to use. There's crossbow, there's shotguns, there's snipers, and pistols. My favorite is the crossbow because so much variation. You have a freezing bow, you have a harpoon bow, you have a, a poison bow, um, an explosive bow, an incendiary bow, you have multiple variations, and it's a lot more strategic than useful. And there's even traps you can set up and all this stuff. And even that, it's just amazingly well done. And the pacing itself is just downright good. Now I'm going to answer another question before I continue on and start talking for 20 hours in. So, let's see. Hmm. Um, let's see. Um, what horror game tropes do these ga this game follow? This is from Ryan Wink Winkler. 
um, the horror tropes actually. It it starts off really like it starts off as a horror trope. I don't know if it is, but it kind of reminds me of the first Resident Evil game where there's two uh, guy cops and there's like a girl cop, and basically one of the cops his hair's all slicked up and he has like a nice vest on. He kind of reminds me of Wesker for some reason. And then there's like the Julie Kidman woman who kind of feels like the Jill Valentine. You feel like Chris Redfield for some reason. I don't know why. But I just had that uh, throwback to the original Resident Evil game for my personal reason. I don't know if that's a trope. And also, it also takes um, certain scenarios from um, horror cliche movies like the meat lockers and mannequins and interior uh, lockers and in, in, uh, factions. It takes those in, um, cliches and also gives a nice twist on them. They will never be considered the same ever. They will always be considered different in this game. As the level design is downright amazing at times. Not because it will get you confused, but because it's more like a labyrinth. A maze. And these maze like designs are downright amazing. There's no like little locator that'll tell you where to go or precisely how to do it. No. You're basically on your own and you have to figure things out on your own. It's like a puzzle. You have to figure each piece out, figure out how to do it. That is amazing, as in horror cliches, it doesn't get too much of horror cliches. Um, next question from Ryan Winkler is, How is the AI and the mechanics of the AI? Is there a set path for the AI, or is it like alien isolation where it's all randomized and unpredictable? Um, the AI is really good. They will all clang up on you and like all like, climb together to attack you while you're trying to survive on just like your last round of bullets. And they're not like alien isolations yet. They're not unpredictable. They have a certain path that you have to do. At times, like, you can tell when they're going to run at you at full speed and, like, slash you or choke you down. Or at times, you'll know them when they're just, like, walking slowly. And you can use stealth to really just, um, like, throw bottles away. You can stab them in the head, which can be an instant kill. But you can also bring their bodies just to make sure they don't come back in the dead. Um, another question is... Hmm. Also, it seems that it looks more like a thriller than a horror because it focuses on the gore. <coughs> Ooh, focuses more on the gore than the scares. Um, that's what it looks like at first, uh, Ryan. But actually, the gore is also part of the scares. Because at times, um, there's this other bo uh, boss called Laura, which is a monster with four arms. If you saw the original trailer, which is the live action trailer, you saw that monster coming out of the blood. She is a gory looking creature. But it's also scary because of how her movements are. She will be clawing at you, running at you fast. And when she kills you, she's a one-hit kill man at times. Every single time I died, it was from her one-hit kills. It was horrifyingly angrifying, but also rewarding when you beat that boss. It's amazing how much amazing it is to get rewarded when you do it. Um, so that's really, um, yeah. So, Ryan... Um, it, it may feel like it's focusing more on gore, but the gore is also just as much as well detailed here as the scares. So that's really good for the game. Um, so Ryan, I really answered all your questions, hopefully. Hopefully you'll ask some more. I'll also do another video about questions like these, so you can always ask more questions later on. Now, let's get into graphics. Visually, in my opinion, a lot of people are going to be saying, Oh, the graphics looks like so It looks like six years old. I like the graphics. The graphics, the game looks incredibly well done. The game actually uses the Intec 5 engine, but they had to modify it for their own reasons. The Intec 5 is a first-person shooter. The third-person is a first-person shooter. The environments look amazing. There's great detail in the animations of the characters. It all looks smooth. And not only that, the blood effect is amazing. When the bastion kills someone or swings it at their head, the bot the head and the bodies are like blown up into little chunks. And the blood effect when it lands on Sebastian walks around with the blood all shiny and gooey like is amazing. That's real good. And the textures is really well done. Despite some texture popping I noticed on the PS4, um, animations, like I said, are amazing. And the game runs smooth at a great constant, smooth 30 frames per second, and a great 1080p visual look. And that looks good. The game looks really good at times. Um, it also, I also forgot to mention this, but there's also a way to save 
and uh, upgrade your character. There's a cyclopic chair where your character sits down, where he's tied down, and there's a thing on his chin that goes like that. That's how you upgrade. And then there's also this woman who you have to sign in at the front. The sign in your name is a sign in. That's basically how you save your game. You basically encounter this woman by certain doors, and you hear like this certain music tone. And then the mirror crack, you go inside the mirror to your safe haven. This is basically where you're protected from the darkness or the evil monsters within the world. And there's also certain keys you have to find throughout the world to open up boxes. And these boxes um, basically have like items that you need, like brain goo. And this brain goo is basically how you upgrade your character. So that's really well done as well. Um, sound design wise, the sound design is top notch. And actually, there's actually a video of one of the sound design developers who would basically eat food into a mic and usually use that as the haunted when they are biting you or when they eat from dead bodies. That is freaking an amazingly smart, carefully done sound design. That is a freaking amazing how they actually did that. My name is Masahiro Izumi. I'm a sound designer. あ、今日はえっと特別に敵の声をえ、つけてくれという依頼が来ました。皆さん忙しくてあの僕が一番下っ端なのでやってます。そういうことで今日ちょっとゾンビの鳴きえっとゾンビが人を噛む時ここにはいっぱい食べ物がありますねえっと買ってきてほしかったのは引き肉とスイカだったんですがなぜかいっぱい来ましたね あ、あ、ジューシー。これ美味しそうですね、これは。これを食べちゃいます。マシュマロ。あ、な、何使うのかよ。いただきます。日本のポテトチップス。まあ、アメリカと同じだと思うんですけど。チップス。取る。ジャパニーズヌードル。これは最初は手でネチャネチャしていきます。<笑><笑> グンナイス。もちろん食べ物は粗末にしてはいけないんです。ね。いい音が取れた。これ以上はお腹いっぱい死んじゃう。メロン食べてる音。ああ。<笑> これをこいつにこれをえっと 
再生スピードを遅くして再生します。ポテトチップスこのサウンドいいねこのサウンドに音をつけるこれ糸コンニャク糸コンニャクでこれらを合わせてそ
Sorry to answer your question, young man, or young adult, or adult, whatever. Um. <laughs> yes, I shave, but I don't do it all the time. I leave it like once in a while. That's the end of the question. Um. And then I got another one. If you do shave them, what do you use to do so? Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Um. Jesus. I I don't use like razors or like tr like fast like things because I don't want to like rip off my hair and then blood comes out so I don't use that scissors. That's it, guys. That's the question I was asked. That's the exclusive question I was asked. Asked, and no more of these questions, please. I really don't want to answer these on video. It feels weird. And I don't like like actually saying this out loud and then putting this online. I don't like it. I don't want to do that no more. So please, guys, if you're going to ask me questions to come to my videos, don't ask perverted ones, or, like, not per- Oh, I know someone's going to say it's not perverted, it's just odd. Well, don't ask odd ones like that. Just uh, ask questions about the game, okay? So, bye, guys. I'll